Well, guys, we gotta stop meeting like this. We really gotta stop meeting like this. But anyways, you guys, welcome back. And here is another updated video of Seastar because of her recent changes. And by recent, I mean probably like six months ago. But this video was also requested by my good boy, Mitty. So shout out to Mitty for this updated video. And without further ado, my boys, let's go ahead and get right into it. Alright, so starting off with Fire Sea Star here, she is an attacker type. She's coming in with 22k HP, nearly 3k attack, and then 1.8k defense. Stat wise, HP is low. Her attack is actually great. She is in at 3 as well, and then her defense is just not the best either. It's not even 2k, but with a super evolution added up there, she should have what, around 24k HP? Um, over 3k attack and then hopefully 2k defense that's definitely going to help make her a lot more solid than how she is now so that's definitely a big plus to have and she comes in with predator and then stun 80% chance for one turn I'm not sure if this goes up to two turns maybe it does but if predator gets a boost in, in terms of damage from skill booking her and her stun gets a boost then I can definitely see fire sea star being a viable mon at least for early to mid game in terms of content so stuff like golems b9 she shouldn't have any problem in hell even running maybe dragons some form of dragons you can use her in there as well decent clan versus clan mon because she does have that aoe stun and um for the nat 3 league i could definitely see her being annoying because predator on a three star skill fully booked up that could definitely be annoying and then if her stun lasts for more than one turn and it's already that high maybe it goes 100 percent that could still be annoying as well, and with a crit lead as well, it will make Fire Sea Star a decent mod. I'm not saying she's perfect, but she's actually quite decent with this recent update. Alright, next up is Water Sea Star, who is an attacker type coming in with 24k HP, nearly 2.5k uh, attack, and then 1.9k defense. Very, very similar to the Fire one. Kind of ironic to say the least and of course super evolution is available so her stats will get a buff to them as well but she comes in with stat 50% chance of two types of stat for one turn and then for her five star skill 60% chance of uh, stat for two turns now here is the lovely lovely debate is she useful for you know pvp content in that three league and all that of course not is she useful u useful for farming Story stages, of course not. Is she useful for clan versus clan? Of course not. Her only predominant use I could see here is maybe one of the Colossuses. Colossi, whatever. I don't know which one requires it, but I think actually you should... I don't know. I don't know which Colossus requires it because I don't do it. Because I don't have to. I'm just lazy. I'm nothing more than a filthy casual. Don't you guys know this? But her predominant use at this point in time would be Golems B10. Would I choose her over Water Miho? It's really up to you. I don't, at this point in time, I don't think it matters. Would I super uh, evolve Water Miho or Water Sea Star? If you like the way they look, feel free to, but are they worth super evo investment, in my opinion? No. No. As long as they're surviving, yeah, you can get increased damage from them hitting a monster because of their increased base attack but sap's still going to do the same amount of damage it does from it, it does from the start whether you're level one or level 60 whether you're super evolved or not sap's still going to take away the same amount of hp so it's not worth the 30 stones to super evolve this in my opinion but once again it's just my opinion boys it, it is professional but it is unlicensed Moving on, we have Wood Seastar over here, who is a balance type coming in with nearly 29k HP, 2k attack, and then 2.1k defense. Stats are... is... it is what it is. It is what it is. They break 2k just about, so I can't hate too much with this Mon. And then she comes in with Thirst for one turn, and then defense down, 60% chance for two turns. Thirst is just one of those things, man. Like... I guess it could be useful, but maybe only useful as a 5-star skill, in my opinion. I'm not a super big PvP guy, because I just play on auto. But, I mean, I guess manually, if you wanted to use this, this could be annoying. But the main issue is, is that 
Number one, you have to spend money to skill book her up, and if her thirst doesn't go for two turns minimum, then I absolutely wouldn't use it regardless of what it gives, because one turn thirst is like the great value version of SP Siphon. You're just better off bringing SP Siphon at that point in time. And then the defense down is obviously more debuffing based, so this is more of a PvP slash clan versus clan mon. Are there better mons out there? Yes, in terms of the Nat 3 League though, again, unless her thirst increases, I don't really see this being viable in my opinion. But don't take it from me because I'm not a PvP expert. But other than that, she doesn't have any real uses in terms of PvE. Because we have Wood Banshee which just towers over her in terms of uses. Way better attack, way better skill set. Just overall a lot better. But if you want to super evo her, go for it if you plan to use her for the Nat 3 League. Other, other than that, is she worth the super evolution? If you like the way that she looks, that's it. But in terms of practicality, I'm I'm not seeing it. Alright, next up is Light Sea Star, who's a tank type coming in with 38k HP. Uh, 2 point... 2 point nothing. 2k attack and then essentially 2k defense. So 38k HP... 2k attack and 2k defense and she is a nat 4 I wish her attack and defense were higher but that's why she has super evolution boys that should put her over 40k HP and hopefully 2.2k ish for her attack and defense but she comes in with shock and then attack down and her shock is two turns and then her critical I mean her attack down which is also critical hit reliant is two turns as well now the issue here is her kit, like her moves in themselves, are perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Good clan versus clan mon. Or PvP if you're just getting into PvP. But her being crit rate reliant kind of takes away from that. Because that means you're going to have to give up a gem slot in order to get her max crit for her skills to be useful. Unless you throw her on intuition and get good crit rate subs. This could be very, very annoying to deal with. That being said, in the ideal world, if you can get this stuff done on Intuition Set and not take away from her HP or defense, and maybe run her as a crit lead if you can't get max crit, then I don't see any downsides to using her. I mean, shot for two turns is great, and then attack down for two turns. This is unbooked. I'm not sure if that changes at all. It's definitely great as well, especially for people just breaking into PvP, but it's just so heavy on the gem requirement that at times it may not seem like it's worth it and even if you do get it worth it chances are you might come across something that just beats her out so overall i mean she is useful and if that's all that you have she's definitely worth the super evolution at least because she's aesthetic and could be annoying with the right gem set but again she's nothing more than a defense mon she's not there there to do damage at all she's just there to be annoying but i feel like she could do that job well Obviously not perfect, there are better mons, but she can do it well. And that's pretty much all that matters. Alright, and last but not least is Dark Sea Star, who is a defender type. She's coming in with 31k HP, 2k attack, and then nearly 3.3k defense, but it is 3.2k defense. Stat wise, solid. Defense type, I mean defender type. She's supposed to have plenty of defense. She has that. Her HP is over 30k, which again is nice attack doesn't really matter because she doesn't need attack but anyway she comes in with double defense aggression so obviously you should build her with triple defense no excuses as to that you can have resist subs or crit subs to go along with that as well to maximize her dps and because she's dark type she benefits from the dark damage boost so obviously something like intuition or a broken set or ruin would be optimal with crit rate subs to get her doing the most damage that she possibly can and her crit rate lead does assist her as well for the newer players out there that can't get mons with max crit right now that definitely does have its uses but obviously once she gets max crit you can just run another a, a different a different lead and congratulations you're done um before this update well before she could be super uh evolved she kind of fell off hard just because other mons like dark me hill could be super evolved and like nike but she Honestly, it's just like the dark version of Light Nike. Like, take everything that you like about Light Nike and turn it dark. So, she's like dark Light Nike. So, that's that's pretty much it. So, she, in terms of survivability, 
Her defense gets a hefty boost. Her HP gets a decent boost as well. So she's even harder to kill. She's going to do more damage. And of, of course, her being a dark type benefits her even more. So this really brought Dark Sea Star back up to where she should be or where she should have always been with this update to her. So I definitely recommend her in terms of uses if you're going to use Aggressor for content, especially for PvP or Clan vs. Clan. I have come across some very, very tanky and some very, very hard-hitting Dark Sea Stars, and I definitely enjoy seeing that. So if you have her, definitely, um, definitely put her to use if you need one. Obviously, some players don't really need her at this point in time, but if... You're just rising up and want to have fun with a good mon. This is definitely the mon to have. But remember, she doesn't need a crit rate slot. You don't need to give her crit rate defense defense. She doesn't need it. You can. You can. You can build her with triple crit rate if you want. But remember, she does not need it. If you want to be perfect with your damage, then go for it. But crit rate subs and resist subs should do the job for you. In terms of RGB for the C-Stars... Fire one, in my opinion, would have the most use. Water, if you need a sapper but you don't want Miho, go for it. Wood, no comment. Light is good in terms of like a um, defense type mon. It's just that her crit requirement is a bit, you know, it is a bit, I don't know, disheartening. It is a bit saddening because some players can't reach that unless you farm a lot. So you got to get good. But obviously, dark ones cream up cream of the crop so if I had to choose in between all five of these I would do the dark one probably the fire one next depending on my golems team and then the light one but I definitely hope this video helped once again shout out to many for um letting me know that hey Elio it's probably time to update this video and as always guys thank you so much for watching if you have any requests or if you want an account review done feel free to leave a comment below and join the discord and I'll see you guys then peace out